Hello and welcome back to another video of Impossible Mowers. In today's video, the old Husqvarna here, Harriet, will run and drive. We're also going to fabricate a muffler for it. So uh, stay tuned. Like I said in today's video guys, we're going to make this puppy run and drive once again. I bought a belt off of eBay from a company called Caltrick Performance. Uh, I bought from them before and they're just really good. Um, they gave me a Kevlar belt which is just what I ordered and I am um, purposely did not film me doing it because it is absolutely it's really difficult to um, film while trying to put this specific belt on because you need two hands and the lighting is really terrible. There's a, It's so low that trying to put the GoPro on the stand, it's just not realistic. It's not just gonna, it's just, it's not gonna happen. And I, I don't wanna make crappy videos for you guys. So I already put it on um, and it's amazing. Um, it just, it fit right on there, no questions asked. Now the big thing about this mower are two big things. Number one, we have the muffler situation, and number two, we have the fuel tank situation. Both I will be walking you through, and um, you can do this with any mower out there. Any freaking mower. I don't know about the newer ones, but any mower from the 90s to the 2000s, you can do this muffler trick with, especially with this one. So, as you guys know, as you guys know the V-Twins, they have two pipes. For single cylinders, they have one pipe. Why? Because it's an engine with only one muffler on it. But the way that single cylinder mufflers are made, they are damn near close to the way V-Twins are made, if not the exact same. Here's what I mean. When you take apart this muffler, which I'm not going to be doing because I'm not a good welder, but if you were to take apart this motor, uh, this welder, holy crap, this muffler. Oh my god, sorry guys. If you take this apart or if you look at it at a schematic or diagram, you're going to notice that these two holes, or this one hole, goes straight down and then it goes to this flat plate. There's a flat plate that runs right across here and then through those flat plate, through that flat plate, there's a bunch of holes about that size plugged all the way through. That is called the resonation chamber. That is what takes that loud noise and muffles it down to a quieter noise. How it's done, it is like scientifically impossible for me to explain but you'll have to just do your own research on that but with V twins it's the exact same setup only difference is there's a second hole so basically what I'm telling you guys is if you have a single cylinder muffler and you want to put it on a V twin it is absolutely possible you can do it and I'm about to show you you can do it I already made a little circle cut out here we're gonna grab my Dremel uh, well, actually what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab my uh, drill, I'm going to drill right in the center, and then from the Dremel with the grinder, I'm going to grind straight, flat um, lines. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to get in with pliers, break them off, and then boom, you get a perfect circle. Not perfect, but a good enough circle. And... I'm going to be walking you guys through that step. Most of that is going to be fast play because not only do I not want to damage the camera, the GoPro, as nice of a camera as it is, and this goes with every single camera, any sparks, welding sparks, bright flashes, anything that can happen to your eyes, try to make that happen with a GoPro. The GoPro, it's not that it's going to have problems doing it, it's that you can damage the lens, you can actually damage the image pic yeah, the image pixel ratio. I believe that's what they call it. Um, basically, the way the camera sees things, you can destroy that by welding in front of it. You can destroy it by um, not having the proper filters when you're grinding. So all that grinding, or or even if you're welding, all that welder's um, slag gets onto the lens, and it's not good. Even with a case, I mean, you got to make sure you got a good case because if the case can't handle it, you shouldn't be doing it. So. That's why I do most of these types of builds on fast play. Um, now, of course, I do have a case that I ordered right here. So 
I will be able to record this in real time and in fast play, especially a close up view in fast play. Uh, usually what I used to do, especially when doing Chuck's steering system and suspension build, is I'd have to record from here. But now that I have this case, I can record more like here. So you guys can really get to see what's going on. Uh, this was a pretty good amount of money. I believe this was around 40 to $50. Um, but you know, this stuff, it's expensive for a reason and it keeps your camera safe. So I'll pay just about damn near anything to keep a $300 GoPro safe. So with all that said and done guys, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be getting this muffler on and we're also going to be getting that fuel tank fixed. Now with this fuel tank, there's a rubber grommet that I explained in the past video. And that is missing, broken off, wore out, it happens. It usually goes right here. Now you're all probably wondering, well, why don't you just buy and replace a new one? That is a new one. I bought that last year. So for the, the fact that the rubber grommet is gone, I am not too sure why. Um, anything can happen, but I didn't own it for the past six months, so I couldn't tell you that. But there are a couple tricks you can do, like putting a couple, I have a couple of rubber grommets sitting around here that you can just press fit on there. Or not press fit, just like put around it and it'll seal itself just the same. Uh, there's other stuff you can do too. So we're gonna be doing that as well. I don't mean to keep jawing to you guys, but I always like to explain what's going on, especially in this video, since there's gonna be a lot of work. So I'm just hoping it works. Um, I know the muffler will. Uh, you, Some of you guys might be questioning the mounting. It's the same thing. I mean, if we look at this V-twin mounting, look at it. See the two holes right here? Boom boom those are the two holes for the muffler right and if we look at chucks over here and grab a flashlight this will be running again it does run and drive up just ugh, too much has been going on um you can see right here come on light there we go see right here mine's got three actually but one, two, three, four. And what you're supposed to have, and we're gonna fabric, fabricate one on here, uh, the same thing I did with the pool on, is you're supposed to have a plate that reaches to these two other extra bolts. So you have these two right here. But with some of them, you have to clamp them on with these two right here. I don't think I'm gonna do that. I think two bolts is good enough. So, uh, what I still have to do though is make a plate that extends this bolt from here up into the front of the engine bay because although it's going to work and it's going to fit, this is not the muffler to a Kawasaki or the muffler to a Kohler. This is the Briggs and Stratton single cylinder. So that means mounting is going to be different. I'll admit it, it's going to be different, but only by a tiny, tiny bit. I mean, it's only going to be a few inches off and it's good enough to just slap on there, bolt it in, get it going. So that is gonna be it and keep in mind guys you don't have to have a box for these mufflers I mean if right now if I wanted to I could Y pipe it and have a dual exhaust coming out the back of my mower I'm not kidding you I can do that that's what's really cool about these mowers is the box where this used to go if you remove that you get a bunch of space to tool around with your mufflers uh, a youtuber I highly recommend is OK off-road mowers he does a lot of that stuff check him out so let's get to it guys um, I'm going to choose the more difficult task first, which is the muffler. So I'm going to shut the camera off here. There's not going to be any talking through it. It's just all going to be visual uh, in some fast play, some real time. So I'm going to shut the camera off, put my case on, get the grinder ready and, um, and the drill ready. And we're going to get her done.
Alrighty guys, so you can see during the fast play there, what I did pretty much is drill the hole, made a couple slots, making a nice X, and then either round or square, I got a couple, I got two round ones right here and two squares right here, or flats, that's alright, um, either round or square, just cut a small amount of the metal away. See what I did there? Small amount. And what that does is it gives the metal a weak point. So you're directing it using these slots that go straight through, but you're making the weak point right here. You're not cutting straight through. Although you could, it can be hard because now when you go to make that turn, it'll grab on the grinder. And as you saw in that fast play just a couple minutes ago, or seconds ago really, um, I grinded a little too far one way. And I also had the grinder face the opposite direction. So instead of pushing toward the metal, it was pushing away and it broke the grinder blade, but no worries, I got like 700 of them. Um, but, so that's pretty much it guys. What I'm doing is just, I'm weakening the metal and I'm creating a base point here so that the metal can fold on itself, snap, and give me a nice circle pattern, uh, or at least in this case, a half circle, half square pattern. That's just the way it turns out. It could be circle or square, it does not matter because whether you like it or not, the muffler has to bolt on in order for it to stay secure unless you're welding it on so I mean the shape it's not I really don't care I could care less so pretty much what we have to do if I did it right is you might need a torch might not you can use this or a wrench I'm gonna use pliers because that makes more sense but in theory, I should be able to just, if it's big enough, get a bite right there. See that? See how it's bending up? See that? Beautiful. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm just doing exactly what I showed you guys, grabbing it up and snapping it off throughout the whole entire circle. And I'll get a nice circle, a nice square. But like I told you guys, it really does not matter the shape. And this is a really cool trick, and you can see how thin that metal is. It's It works really good with these mufflers. So, give it a shot, and you can see... Let me get a light over here, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about, but the plate... You can kind of see it in there. Come on. This light might need some new batteries. But you can see in there... See my light on the other side? There it is. There's the resonation chamber and you got the holes. There's a hole right there. See that one right there? You got a bunch of those these sized holes running throughout the muffler and it's just a flat plate. So all they did for the single cylinders was just drill a hole and leave this one bare. And all you have to do for the V-twins is just keep the hole there and make another one right here and boom, it'll mount just the same as the single cylinder. So, good trick, I'll tell you. It's good to have brains. Let's see if this piece will come off. Oh yeah, easy. I see how I'm gripping it and I'm bending and right at its breaking point, right where I grinded around. Bring it back and forth. Gonna snap off and what's nice about doing that sorry about the camera work it's pretty shitty but what's nice about that is it's only going to break off the part that you made weak so you can have a neater job so look at that I didn't weaken this area or this area I only weakened the surrounding area across the circle so only the surrounding area across the circle is gonna break off trick of the trade guys this is super super helpful I don't care what more you're doing that's helpful so without further ado guys, I'm going to cut the camera, finish breaking off these pieces, and we're going to line it up against the muffler and see what we're looking at here. Now keep in mind, we're still going to have to fabricate a plate, but no worries, we got plenty of steel around here. So um, I'll get back to you guys when we start to uh, see how this looks, mock it up on the muffler. I was just mocking this up guys, I don't need a bracket. This Husqvarna is pretty freaking alright. Look at this. Mock it up. Boom, little exhaust leak. Look at that, one hole, two hole. 
lines right up. Now that leak, as for that, uh, I'm not going to care too much because it's not going to do anything. Um, not too much, I mean, it might make it louder by like 0.5% decibels, but uh, I mean, it's a lot, it sounds a lot better than it did before, I'll tell you that. Um, so without further ado, let's bolt this puppy up, fix our fuel issue, and uh, start riding this thing. Um, I don't know if I can hit the trails immediately, but we're sure as hell going to try, at least for a little bit. Um, I got to at least try to drive this around a little bit on the driveway because I do not know. Uh, I don't know if it's going to have any other problems and I don't want to be stuck on the trail. So we'll do the driveway first. If everything passes inspection, we'll just whole hog it right into the off-road trail. See what she's got. See if she's still the same rig I remember. I'm also going to leave some funny ass YouTube shorts. Uh, I'll leave it at the end of this video so you can pick and choose as I'm saying my goodbyes. So um, of this thing and Leroy back in the day for some of you viewers that don't know this was a pretty kick-ass mower I mean given its steering problem it was pretty kick-ass so enough chat let's get this muffler on actually I'm just gonna do it right here right now I should have I was gonna cut the camera off and do it but there's just something about doing it with the viewers you know so, I'm actually just going to use any, any bolt, honestly. Um, I think what I might do though, just to cheat, is I'm going to try to see, yeah, I'm going to try to see if I can't take off one of these bolts, use them here, and I might have another one of these sitting around. I don't know if I have two, that's why I'm kind of cheating a bit. I'm not too sure if... Well, I know it's not the way it's supposed to be done, but it'll work. The Poulon's exhaust is, I've made it the same way. All right, trying to find something tighter. Oh, US Jenny, looking shiny. Okay, I guess that was, try this one. Oh, nine mil. Money. So this exhaust is gonna smoke a little bit, and the reason why is to take this bolt out without snapping it. I'm gonna use a little bit of penetrating oil. So it's gonna smoke a little bit. That has to be expected. The solenoid is, is acting up pretty strange on this rig. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just because it has it's literally been sitting for a long time and the battery is just a wee bit dead. So with that being given, I think uh, solenoid not working isn't gonna do its job because that solenoid needs a certain amount of volts to pass through, create the bridge, and start your motor. If it doesn't have that volts, it ain't gonna work. Let's see. Uh-oh. Oh. That piece. So now, what we're going to do, take the case off of the stand here, because we don't need it anymore. So now we're going to mock it up, bolt it on, see how it fits, see how it sits, really. Sorry, I'm screwing the GoPro on the stand. Bing, bang, boom. Lift it up. Something I probably should have done in the beginning, but who cares? Alrighty, so now. Bring my toolbox over so you guys can see. Let's see if we can't bolt this old jewel right up. It is the wrong size. 
Let's see. Huh. Well, I'm actually looking at this bolt and I don't think I can use it. Threads rotted off. So I'm gonna hunt for a bolt and I'll get right back to you guys. Alrighty guys, got the bolt. That's what I was looking for. Fits right in there, nice and easy. We're just gonna ram it right in there. I'll do the first bolt on camera and then do the rest off. And then uh, we'll head back to that fuel situation there and see what we can't do to get that gem all worked up. I could have made my cuts a lot cleaner, I will admit. But I really think for what I did and what I had on me, it's not bad at all. It could have been worse. I have seen worse. Okay, a couple threads in. It's holding. Grabbing the right fault. Start for the camera shake. Man, this stuff sure takes a lot out of me, I'll tell you that. Bolt number one, and you know what? I'm gonna do it anyways. Find a bolt here on the frame. There we go. A lot of these bolts that go on the frame, you don't need on your mower. That puppy ain't going anywhere. Famous last words. We got the exhaust mounted up. Let's head straight back to that fuel system. Get that puppy working solid. And uh, put the hood on. We're out of here. Alrighty guys, I did not do it on camera. Um, unfortunately, just because it's right near the gas tank and I did not want to risk anything happening. So I did it with two hands, of course. And there's just nowhere to put the camera. But what I did is, she's firm in there, but I just took uh, two pieces of quarter inch um, shrink tube, heat shrink tube, and um, put it right up against the fuel, the fuel line after it dried, of course. And then I just heated one on there, heated the other one on top of that, and it's created a perfect gasket for it. And it is like really nice. Shook up the tank, nothing's leaking. We're good to go. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cut this camera off right here. Um, we just finished the muffler and that beautiful shrink tube job. I mean, it's good for a pinch. Um, we're going to assemble everything here. And then next time you'll see me, guys, we're cranking this puppy over and going for a drive. So uh, without further ado, let's get right on to it.
the more I give it more hydrostatic pressure. So I know it's not out of fluid. I think the transmission needs to be run a lot more because what can happen with any automatic transmission out there, even you know a Craftsman or any hydrostatic mower, when it sits for a long time, all that fluid ends up on the bottom of the trans and it doesn't get to the spots where it needs to. And when you go to haul it out like what I'm doing, it's gonna whine, it's gonna complain. This instance, it's whining and it's dragging on the motor. So it's not getting the fluid everywhere. So I think, cross my fingers, it started to get a lot better as I was coming up. I was full throttle and it wasn't bogging down so much. Still, but not too much. So th at this point, I, in my professional opinion, I think it comes down to just getting the hydrostatic fluid flowing, keep riding it. I might have to spend an hour or two riding this puppy to get it back to that baseline level because the engine's running strong. You know, it's got a new carburetor, it's got a whole tune-up kit and it runs and idles beautiful right now. So with that being said, I'm, I don't think I can hit that off-road trail. It's, it's just not there yet. It's, I can tell you what's gonna happen. I'm gonna hit the off-road trail and then on my way back up, it's either gonna stall from too much pressure or not too much pressure, too much resistance, like it was trying to do up this hill, or it's actually gonna go up the hill. I am not too sure. I usually would take the risk and go for it, but I'm tired as hell right now, and this transmission's a little weird. When you go to push that pin back for neutral, it doesn't wanna push back. Um, and I know why the spring on it's really, really, really toasted. Um, but, and all in all, I can't hit the trail. I will do a separate video though after I get this puppy running a lot more. I will do a separate video on us just romping the hell out of this thing, getting that fluid flowing and getting it going. This has been sitting for three months, two months, and it hasn't been running. And it did this to me in the winter one time on a YouTube video. So it makes it makes sense. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We got this puppy to run and drive once again. I mean, like I said, the more we run it, the better it's gonna be. And it's got a muffler, and it's just the right amount. It's not too loud, but it's not too quiet. And that's the way I like it. I mean, just listen to it. It's beautiful. So, I hope you all stay safe. Remember to check out the links below. Hypa helped us out. Thank you very much, Hypa. And I hope to see you guys next time. Without further ado, this is Impossible Mowers, out.